to someone who would disagree with us this evening. I know there's a lot of people out here who, who would want us to, to be quiet. I know there's a lot of people out here who say, Preacher, man, you're, you're out of your mind. You see, my brother here was just preaching of the goodness of God. He was just preaching of the mercy of God and that, that Christ died for sinners. You see, he was preaching the, the glories of the cross, that Jesus Christ hung, blood, and died on a cross, that men like you and me can go free, that we can be delivered of our sins, that we can be delivered of our transgressions. But what the problem is, is that there's a lot of people out here who don't think that they have transgressed, who don't think that they're unworthy of God. <coughs> I, I would assert that there's a lot of people out here who would say that I'm a good person, who would say, you're okay, I'm okay, and we're on our way. There might even be some religious people out here this evening that would say, you know what, I go to Sunday school, I, I, I read my Bible, and, and I pray. Well, I want to talk to, to religious people as well as the unconverted this evening. I want to talk to the atheist, and I want to talk to the Catholic this evening. You see, I want to talk to, to, to the Protestant, and I want to talk to, to the Muslim this evening. I, I want to herald the glories of Christ. I want to herald the glories of my King in your ear. <coughs> you see what the Bible says? It says, what you hear in secret, shout on the rooftops. It says, what you hear in the ear, shout on the rooftops. So that's what I'm here to do tonight. Sir, I'm here to tell you to repent and believe the gospel while you still have life, while you still have breath, while there's still time that you can cry out to God, have mercy on me, the sinner. You see, but what it is, is that a lot of people out here, again, they don't think that they're sinners. You know what? But I tell you to examine yourself, not by my standard, not by your next door neighbor's standard, not by Barack Obama's standard, but to, 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 to examine yourself by God's standard. Let's take a look at God's law and see how, how we would measure up. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to roll out <coughs> what I call God's ten cannons. I'm going to roll out God's ten cannons and I'm going to ask you to examine yourself in light of those ten cannons. The first cannon that I'm about to roll out is, is this one. It's the ninth commandment. It says that thou shall not lie. And I ask you, is there anybody out here who can say, I've never told a lie? Because if you did, what I would say to you is this. Boom! That's the first cannon that's went off in your guilty miss of telling a lie, I'm sure. You see, because if there was anybody out here who would say that I haven't told a lie, I would look to your face and call you a liar. You see, we've all borne false witness. And this is the next commandment that I'm going to roll out. The next canon that I take out this evening, this canon is the third commandment. And it's very, very serious. It's that we should not take the Lord's name in vain. And I ask you tonight, sir, have you ever taken the Lord's name in vain? Sometimes, boom! What if God's cannons just went off in your direction, you see? And you would be guilty. You see, we're all caught up under God's law. We're all made guilty under God's law. And God's law shuts the mouths of those who mock. You see, there's no one who can escape the all-seeing eye of God. And one day we're all going to stand before Him in judgment and give an account for every thought, word, and deed we've done in the body. You see, now this is the seventh commandment. You know in the Bible, that Jesus, in the Sermon on the Mount, they said that you know it's been said of old, thou shalt not commit adultery. Now a lot of you might be thinking, hey, I'm safe with that one. I've never committed adultery. But Jesus in that same Sermon on the Mount what he said is the person who even looks at another person and has an improper thought that they're guilty of committing adultery. What that means, if someone who's married looks and has an improper thought, then they're guilty before God. And boom! One more of God's cannons would have went off. And I ask you, who can say that you've never taken a look at someone of the opposite sex who's not your spouse and look with an improper thought. You see, if we were to play our thoughts on a picture screen right here in Old Town Sacramento, there'd be many of us who would be embarrassed of some of our private thoughts. There'd be many who would say, shut that off. I don't want the world to see. If we were to put a computer chip behind our ear and record our thoughts just for one week and take those that same computer chip and put it into a computer and play it on a projector, we'd see exactly how wicked and destitute we really are. We'd see our wickedness revealed. Well, I'm here to tell you that, that God sees all of our wickedness. God sees our lying. 
God sees our disobedience. When we're disobedient to parents, God sees that. God, God sees all things. And we're going to have to give an account to that God on Judgment Day. What do you think about what I'm saying, sir? You have any comment? Okay, great. Pay close attention then, because I'm also talking to the atheists. Again, I'm talking to the Presbyterian. Tonight, tonight I'm talking to the Roman Catholic. I'm talking to the Muslim. I'm talking to the Buddhist. I'm talking to religious people and irreligious people this evening. That's what I'm doing. Blondie in the doorway, I'm talking to you too tonight. Repent and believe the gospel while there is yet still time. Put down your weapons of warfare. Cry out to God. Have mercy on me, the sinner. You see, I'm a Bible thumper. I believe in a whole Bible and not a Bible full of holes. You see, if you turn on most of these modern televangelists, if you turn on people like Joel Osteen, you won't hear these things. You know, Joel said in an interview, I don't talk about sin. Everybody knows they're sinners, and you don't need to talk about that. I I'm not a preacher, he says, but yet... Every Lord's Day, he fills up the compact center, calls it the biggest church in America, and he tries to preach what is called the gospel. Well, I tell you, the church in America needs a check up from the neck up. You see, people need to be told, people need to be startled that on, there's hell to pay on Judgment Day. People need to know that there's a holy, righteous, and just God, and that he's been offended. They need to know that there's a holy, righteous, and just God, and that he'll give, they'll give an account before this God one day. On Judgment Day, they'll give an account. The Bible says this, God has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. God has appointed a day in which he will judge each and every man, each and every woman, each and every boy and girl. He'll judge us all, and give a, we'll have to give an account for every thought, word, and deed that's done in the body. We'll have to give an account for each and every sin that we've ever committed. If you're not found covered in the blood of Christ, if you're not found washed in Christ, if you're not found seated in Christ, then there's hell to pay on Judgment Day. If you're not found covered in the blood of Christ, that's what the Bible says. You know what? You say amen, sir. But I tell you, unless you repent, you perish. You see, mockers will have their place in the lake of fire. Those who mock will have their place in the lake of fire. It's an awful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And a lot of people, you know what, they say this. They say, preacher, why don't you just be quiet? We're trying to have a good time tonight. Why don't you just be quiet? Well, I'm going to be like that alarm clock that went off on your dresser this morning. That alarm clock that you just wanted to hit snooze and get five more minutes. That alarm clock rang and you said, you know what, go away. I don't want to hear this alarm clock. Only thing is, you can't shush me. You can't quiet me down. You see, I'm going to ring and ring and ring. I'm going to ring and ring and ring. I'm going to ring in the ears of my listeners that peradventure God may grant repentance. That peradventure God may grant somebody repentance that they'll put down their fornication, that they'll put down their drunkenness, that they'll put down their adultery, their drug abuse, their pornography, that God will reach down and remove a heart of stone and give a heart of flesh and cause sinners to walk in his ways, that he'll write those judgments on their hearts and cause them to walk in his ways, that he'll give them a new mind, that he'll make them a new creation, that they'll be what's called born again, you see, born from above, that, that, that they'll turn their hearts towards God, that they'll turn in humble repentance towards God, that they'll lay down their weapons of warfare, that they'll stop rejecting the gospel of Jesus Christ, that they'll stop rejecting the precious blood of Christ, and that they'll humble themselves and say, have mercy on me, the sinner, that they'll repent of all their sins, that they'll have a change of mind towards their sin, and they'll have a change of mind towards God. Because then, and only then, can God enable us in order to keep His commandments, to walk with holiness, to walk with striving to enter into the straight gate. You see, many people, what they try and do is they try and do it on their own. They say, you know what, I can be a good person. You know what, on New Year's I'll turn over a new leaf and I'll stop cheating on my wife, I'll stop being a drunk. You know what, I'll stop smoking cigarettes or I'll stop smoking marijuana. They'll say, I'll do all these things. But New Year's resolutions doesn't save anybody. Being moral and outwardly moral doesn't save anybody. The Bible says that we must be born again. That we must be born again. 
And the Bible says this. It, it says that Christ, that Christ, he, he was like a serpent raised up in the wilderness. That's what Jesus said when speaking to Nicodemus. He said, just like Moses raised up the serpent on the pole, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. You see, and the Son of Man must be lifted up and raised high. The Son of Man must be lifted up above the earth so that sinners like you and me can go free, so that sinners like you and me can find peace. You see, but this is what the Bible says. The Bible says that, 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 that God is the light of the world, that Jesus Christ is the light of the world, and that he came to light up all men. But it says this, Men, they love darkness rather than light. You see, men love darkness rather than light. Though the light of the world, Jesus Christ, has come to light up all men, you see, and to give them hope of a gospel, you see what happens is that they love their sin, they love their wickedness. You, young man, you love your sin and your wickedness more than you love Jesus Christ. That's what I can tell you tonight, sir. That's what I can tell you right now. You talk when you walk away, but stay here and talk for a while. Stay here and back up what you say. Because I tell you, on Judgment Day, there's hell to pay. Unless you repent and believe the gospel, you're going to perish. You know that? You are ready for that? How do you know you're ready for that? What's that? So you don't care about your soul? That, that, you know what? That's foolish talk. That's foolish talk. Because you know what? Everybody cares about their soul. Let me ask you this. If I gave you a million dollars for one of your eyeballs, would you do it? Hell yeah. You'd do it? How about if I gave you 20 million for both of your eyeballs? Hell yeah. Well, why, why would you do that? Because you can travel the world and see all kinds of things. Oh no, you didn't have any eyeballs. You wouldn't be able to see anything. Then you'd be useless. You'd be blind. You see, but you know what? Really, your, your eyeballs are precious to you. You, you know what? Your, eye, your eyeballs are, are, are precious to you. And you know why? That's because they're the windows to your soul. You see, your soul looks out of those eyeballs. And how much more valuable is one soul than their eyeballs? You see, Jesus, Jesus said this, what profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Go ahead. I didn't say that at all. That, that's, I, did I say that? You're putting words into my mouth. What I said is I said that your eyes are the windows of your soul. That's what I said. Your soul looks out of those eyes. So it's, it's just my soul, not even What's that? Out of those eyes? That's right. My soul looks out of these eyes. Okay? So, so, so okay? So, so I'm not saying that a blind person doesn't have a soul. Okay? That, that's not what I said. Pay close attention. You're an intelligent person. You go to school, right? You get good grades? Okay, well, pay close attention to what I'm saying. Because it's a serious thing. You see, the Bible says this. The Bible says that it's appointed unto man once to die, and then after that comes judgment. And see, that's what I'm doing tonight. I'm warning people uh, of judgment is coming, that they can flee to the Christ, that they can flee to the cross and live. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying to you tonight, instead of walking by a couple times mocking, lay this to heart. Lay what we're saying to heart. We're not out here for our health. We're not out here because this makes us happy. But we're out here to call sinners like you to repentance. We're out here to cause you to look to the cross. What, you say you're not a sinner? You say you're not a sinner? Would you say you're a good person? Huh? You're a good person? Okay, let me ask you a couple questions to see if that's true. Is that all right? Uh, okay, have you ever told a lie before? What does that make you? Well, it more rhymes with fire. Rhymes, I'm not talking about everybody. I'm talking about you right now. Rhymes, rhymes with fire. Can somebody help us out? What, what happens if you tell lies? What does that make you? Starts with an L. Starts with an L. Liar. Liar. Okay, great. You guys. So, so if you tell lies, if I told lies to you, what would you call me? A liar. Okay, a liar. Great. So then you'd agree that you told lies that makes you a liar, right? Okay. What's that? You know, it doesn't make me a pillar. It makes me a preacher of the gospel. Repent and believe the gospel, sinner. Repent and believe the gospel, sinner. Repent and believe the gospel. But hey, come on, don't go away. I'm still talking to you. I'm still paying attention, okay? Okay, but what I want to say is this, okay? This is the third commandment, all right? Okay. Thou shalt not take the Lord thy God's name in vain. Have you ever used God's name as a four-letter cuss word? Have you ever took God's name? Have you ever put God and damn together in a sentence so you didn't say, God, I praise you, and God will damn you to hell? Have you ever done that? If you use it in an irreverent way? 
Uh, uh, you already told me a liar, and I think you already told me you're a liar, and I believe you're lying to me right now. Let me ask, have you ever said, oh, JC, when you drop something on the floor? You, you've, ne you've never? Well, besides that, watch your mouth, there's ladies present. Watch your mouth, there's ladies present. But so, 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 again, you've never taken the Lord's name in vain. Is that what you're saying? You've never said Jesus and Christ irreverently. I, I don't believe you, sir. You already told me you're a liar. Okay? But now let me ask you here. Here, let me ask you this one. Have you ever looked at someone at, to at lust after them, have an improper thought with someone who is not your spouse? Have you ever looked at someone and had an improper thought who is not your spouse? Have you ever done that? Huh? Okay, because you know what Jesus said? Jesus said this in the seventh commandment. It says, you know, it's been said of old, thou shalt not commit adultery. Okay, but a lot of people think, whew, I haven't done that one. I'm not married. I can't commit adultery. That's what a lot of people say. But you know what the Bible says? The Bible says if you even look at another person and lust after them, you've committed adultery already with you in your heart. So, oh, then you're a wicked fornicator. That's what that's called. That's what the Bible calls that. The Bible calls that fornication. And the Bible in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 says... Fornicators will not inherit the kingdom of God. Oh, you know full well you're a sinner. Hey, you know what? Everybody is a sinner. That's a very good point. That's a very good point that everybody is a sinner because you know what? What's that? What's that? That that that's a very that's a very good point. Get washed in the blood of Christ and and, and you'll be okay. And you know what, Miss? You're right. But you but you know what? It's that 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 is where you're flawed. That's where you're wrong. See, Jesus isn't some genie up in the sky that we can, you know, go out and fornicate and, and get drunk and do all kind of wickedness and then wake up on Sunday morning, say a couple Hail Marys, talk to a little guy in a box, and then go about our business and come back and sin all we want next week. That's a wicked Catholic practice. That's a wicked, ungodly, and unbiblical practice. What the Bible says is that we're supposed to have a change of mind. We're supposed to repent. You see, we're supposed to have godly sorrow. We're supposed to turn from sin and turn to righteousness, turn to the cross. And we strive to live for holiness. We don't put sin on our calendar. You see, we stop our fornication. We stop smoking the wacky tobacco. That's what we stop doing. We stop, we, we stop our, 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 our drunkenness. You see, and I know you can't do that. And that's just what the Bible testifies. The Bible testifies that light has come into the world, but that men love darkness rather than light. See, like I said, when you first walked by, I said you love your sin more than you love Christ. You see, Christ is readily available. He's hung, blood, and died on a cross, but you love fornication more than you love Christ. Because if you love Christ, you'd quit fornicating. If you love Christ, you'd stop leaving hickeys on this young man's neck while you weren't married. That's what you do. That's what you do. You're not a daughter of Christ. You're not a daughter of Christ. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says that in Matthew chapter 7, it says that there will be many on that day that say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out demon in your name? Did we not do many wondrous works? And what the Bible says is that he'll say, I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of lawlessness. That's a very serious thing. You see, that's done to religious people. That's done to, to people who called on the name of God. That's done to people who said, I am a daughter of Christ. John chapter 2, verse 23, it tells a story of people who followed Christ and they believed on Him and they trusted in Him. But then there's something very serious that people don't realize in modern Christianity. It says that Jesus did not commit Himself to them. Jesus did not commit Himself to them. You see, these were people who believed Christ they looked at Christ, they saw the miracles that he did, but he did not believe them. And the Bible says it's because he knew what was in their hearts. The Bible says that he knew what was in their hearts. And you see, miss, he knows what's in your heart. He knows that you say you love me, but the Bible says this, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So when you say, I love Jesus, but yet you continue to fornicate? If you say, yeah, I love Jesus, you, cont you continue to, to smoke the wacky tobacco? If, if you continue to, to do that, you, you, you see, well, what, what, what happens there is, is, is that you're trampling the blood of Christ. You're professing His name, and Christ is none of yours. You're graceless. You're graceless. That, that, that's all right, sir. You tell, you, tell me, you tell me what it says, sir. You, you tell me what it says, sir. 
What's that? Yeah, 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 yeah. You should lose your little stoner verse. Come on, we all know it's a little stoner verse. Okay, I'm not a dummy. I've been around the block. When you were still wetting your diapers, I was rolling honey, blunt, honey blunts. Okay, I've been around the block. Don't take, don't play me close. Don't play me for a fool because I'm an old man. I was, I was putting in work way before you were even a twinkle in your daddy's eye. But I'm telling you now to repent and believe the gospel. See, sir, because if you mock the gospel of Jesus Christ, if you abuse the gospel of Jesus Christ, you'll perish.